Hi, my name is Lee Matthews and I'm a physiotherapist and I work here at Queen's Hospital and I'm part of the pain management team here. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about pain. So pain might seem really obvious and we've all had it at some point in our lives for one way or another but actually we've started to understand that, that pain's a lot more complicated than at first we thought and it might actually be that there's certain things we can do or certain ways we can, can change things slightly that will help to better manage our symptoms. One thing we know is if we have a better understanding of pain, sometimes it can take away some of the distress that goes with it. And also, if we've got a better understanding of the things that can contribute to our pain or make it worse, hopefully we can control those things better. And it might be making small changes or looking at things slightly differently can actually improve your symptoms or decrease the number of bad days you have. So the human body is a very complicated thing. There's lots of internal organs there. There's things like muscles, tendons, ligaments and skin. And in amongst all of those things, there's lots and lots of nerve endings. And those nerve endings act like messengers. They send lots of information through your nervous system towards your brain. So if we think about things like my hand, there's, there's nerve endings that detect touch. There's nerve endings that detect hot and cold. If we think about when we move, when our eyes are closed, that's nerve endings in your joints and muscles that tell your body what's going on, what position it's in. So at any given moment in time, your brain is looking at what's going on around you with all of those electrical signals going on that go through that nervous system up the spinal cord into the brain and whereupon it acts on that information like a computer making the best possible judgment. So traditional ways of looking at pain using what we call the biomedical model was to look at the area where you felt those symptoms and it might be they'd find a tendon or a joint that was irritable there. There might be wear and tear of a joint and you could have a replacement and for lots of people, they benefited from this. Their symptoms would ease after that procedure and they got on with their lives. But it didn't provide all the answers. It could be that you had lots of tests looking for pain and they found nothing was actually wrong in that affected area. And yet that person's experience of pain was very real. Also, when we were doing tests like uh, x-rays of, of a hip, for instance, it might be that you're getting lots of pain from your hip and when we have an x-ray in front of us, we find out the other side has actually got more wear and tear than the side where you're getting all of your symptoms from. We also know that in its extreme that there was things like phantom limb pain. That person's experiencing pain in a leg that might no longer even be attached to them. And yet that experience is very real to them. So this isn't just something that's going on in their imagination. It's a very real sense of pain. And there's no leg there. So what was going on? We also know that pain seems to have some sort of variability to it. For instance, if I'm busy in the garden doing things, it might actually be that I bang or knock myself or even scratch the back of my hand. But because I'm busy, I don't even notice that injury occurring. And yet if I was to scratch the back of my hand in the same manner, I'd definitely feel that happening. So pain seems to be a bit more complicated than we first realised. What we also know is that the world around us can influence our pain. If I'm stressed, if I'm upset about things, if I'm dealing with things like anxiety or bereavement, or if I'm really angry about things, all of those factors can make the experience of pain worse. So it doesn't just seem to be this biological thing that's happening. Actually, there's other things that influence us there. And if pain is protecting us from danger or harm, that does make a lot of sense when I put my hand near a cooker, telling me to pull my hand away and protect it from further injury. But what about with back pain? For instance, if I'm sat down in a chair too long, it might be that my back pain is provoked. And yet I know that sitting in a chair isn't dangerous, and yet my body's telling me that I'm at risk in that position. And is pain always proportional to damage or injury? If we think about a paper cut, that can hurt quite a lot, and yet it's a relatively small injury to my skin. And then on the other end of the spectrum there, there's documented cases of battlefield analgesia, where someone's in the middle of a life-threatening situation and they run to safety. And it's only after they get clear of the battlefield when they're out of that danger that they realise they've been shot in the leg. I mean, that would be incredibly painful under any other set of circumstances. So this pain system seems to be hot-wired sometimes and other times it chooses not to go off at all. 
That traditional pr approach, the biomedical model, has answers for some of those things, but it doesn't seem to have answer for all of those things. So the way we look at pain is changing, and we now see that it's like more like a warning system, like a burglar alarm, for instance. Your body is looking at incoming signals, and the brain triggers this pain response based on that information. And that can be due to an actual threat, like if I put my hand onto a hot cooker, but also even a perceived threat or danger around us can also trigger a pain response to happen. So pain is a normal response to what we perceive as a threat around us. What we also realise is our nervous system is adaptable. Certain things can make us more sensitised to pain and certain things can calm down that pain. So our body is a very complicated thing. If you went to the gym a lot and trained by doing lots of sit-ups, you might end up with a six-pack to show for it. And in the same way with our nervous system, it adapts to what's going on around us. So if we experience pain a lot, over time, our nerves slowly build that signal and rewire it to strengthen it. It's a bit like someone walking across a grass field. To begin with, it might be that the grass is quite long, but as they repeatedly walk backwards and forwards, as those nerve signals get sent from where you feel the pain towards the spinal cord in the brain, they become strengthened over time. So it might actually be, if it was the analogy of a field, that a path slowly starts to appear. First of all, the grass becomes more worn, and then eventually it's a bit like a road being there. And what that means to our body in terms of the nervous signals is that we can send more pain with less things to cause the pain in the first place. So what was a big knock or a bump to begin with could just be sitting down for any length of time to trigger the very same sense of pain. The experience of pain is a very real thing, whether it's phantom limb pain, whether it's back pain, or any other reason that you get pain. Learning about pain and how it works can be helpful. And we know that the human body is complicated but what we now see is that some of our nerve endings act as danger sensors and that at a certain level sometimes the brain triggers what we call a pain response and pain can be influenced by many things it can be from previous experiences it can be from thoughts and emotions and it can actually rely heavily on the context of what's going on around us and that's why there was all those different things that didn't fit into that original biomedical model because it isn't just a back it's not just a neck. Wherever you experience that pain, it's connected to a human body and the thoughts and feelings and all the things that are going on around you at any given time. So under normal circumstances, when we have an injury, we get pain. And as that injury mends itself, that pain slowly eases. As we get back towards the things we normally do, we get less and less pain until for most cases, the pain disappears. But for some people, unfortunately, pain can persist after an injury. And with time, the nervous system actually gets quite good at sending these pain signals. We find with long-term pain, that pain becomes less representative of harm or damage. And because of this pain, there's lots of other things that happen. When we're fearful of movement, you often find that accompanying that we get joint stiffness, muscle tightness, Pain itself makes our muscles more tense as well, so sometimes we get people doing gentle stretches. Pain impacts upon our behaviour in many ways, it affects the quality of our sleep. And over time, because we've often withdrawn from the things we enjoy, like socialising, like hobbies and activities, you find that people generally become deconditioned. So then if they try and exert themselves to do things they want to, the pain comes on more easily as well. It's normal for for people that experience long-term pain to become withdrawn, sometimes we can find that our mood is affected, things like depression, anxiety, and suffering and distress that goes with those things. So in conclusion, our modern understanding of pain is to see pain as a warning system. There's certain things that we experience, certain things that we might do that inadvertently might actually increase the sensitivity of that warning system. Things like anxiety and distress can actually make the pain signals more frequent and, and more, more intense as well. And there's certain things we can do that can help to dial down the pain. You might have found strategies already to help manage your symptoms and you might be doing a really good job of that. But in my next video, we're going to explore different strategies and things that we might do and look at that can actually help to dial down that warning system and hopefully in, as an end result of that, have less intensity of pain. It might be have more good days and fewer bad days. 
it might even be that your pain doesn't change that much but actually through doing certain things you can actually get back towards doing the things you want to and have less suffering and distress that goes with your pain so thanks for watching and we'll see you soon